Hi, I'm Beth Dooley, author of In Winter's Kitchen. Thank you, Milkweed, for inviting me to read from my collection of personal essays about our local food shed. Now, this is not a cookbook. Rather, it's the story of the friendships I've made by walking fields and making cheeses and cooking with chefs and restaurant kitchens of harvesting wild rice. It's also the story of raising our sons and making a home in Minnesota far away from where I grew up in suburban New Jersey. The first chapter is called Apples, and it focuses on picking apples with our children when they were young at our favorite farm in Western Wisconsin. When your favorite tree gives you too many apples, you make sauce. Picking apples is mesmerizing and getting our sons to come down from those trees to head home was always a challenge. The trunk load of fruit filled the car with the sweet sense of damp grass and decay. Back in our kitchen, our oldest son, Matt, the most cautious, sliced the apple to reveal the star in the center and then passed them to Tim, the youngest, who took his work very seriously and removed the skins with a peeler. Then Kip, the least patient and most easily bored, pitched each half into the pot a few feet from the counter. On the stove, the sauce burbled its cinnamon comfort. They'd take turns stirring the pot until it simmered into a fine caramel mash. One end of go evening, just as we returned home, my father called to say he'd landed in town and hoped it wouldn't be an imposition to spend the night. And because he was an amateur pilot, it wasn't odd for him to fly cross country earning air miles, but he never arrived unannounced. That night, when he entered our home, he was subdued and weary. What had motivated this trip and why was he so downtrodden? A spat with my mother, perhaps, a business setback? Distracted by homework and dinner and bass and applesauce, I just didn't ask. But what I recall now is how he sat at the table. He relaxed in the glow of a scotch in his hand, seemingly soothed by the boys who scrambled up on his lap and hopped down to stir the sauce. The kitchen filled with good smells while he shared stories of his war years on an escort ship in the Pacific, and then of bumming through Alsace, France, and the orchards and the calvados of our exotic ancestral home. The other day, our now 25-year-old son, Kip, invited me over for dinner. And as I tripped over the bushel of apples in his doorway, it wasn't hard for me to discern that he needed my help making applesauce and apple butter. And as we peeled and sliced, I realized that apples embody the endless qualities of motherhood, of risk and comfort and promise. Cooking in my son's kitchen, I was not back into the presence of my father and of our boys in the trees and into the moments of reckless joy balancing on those apple branches myself. Some say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but as our sons mature, I watch myself becoming the child of my children, just as my father sought parental comfort from me. As I witness my son's journeys into adulthood, I vicariously experience their delights and their disappointments. It's a privilege and it's a curse and I seem to grow younger and older at once as the child I was, the mother I used to be, and the grandmother I hope to become collapse together. Thank you, Milkweed, for your beautiful books and for this incredible community you've built around really good books. Thank you.